storm show. Hey, it's a storm show. What is up, Storm Chasers? Today we have an exclusive interview with an artist straight out of Florida. Akila, like Akila and the B, so that's why I call myself Akila B. Nice. Okay. So, um, I saw your IG video. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Keely Beach. Y'all already know what time it is. And I'm just coming to y'all, you know, just to give y'all a rundown what has been brought to my attention. And excuse my nails. I'm about to go get my nails done. But anyway, Megan Thee Stallion just dropped out her album um, the other night called Good News. And I love it. You know, I, I fuck with Megan Thee Stallion. I love Megan Thee Stallion. So there was a song featuring the City Girls called Do It On A Tip. And... My friends and my fans sending it to me, and I'm like, okay. So let me go take the time out to listen, and I listen to it, and I'm like, hold up, bitch, this my song. <laughs> so you know, and it's not to say that okay, making a stallion stole my song or whatever the case may be, because I understand that people have ghost writers and hooks are brought to people for them to write verses. So she probably ain't know nothing about my song, and this is not to bash her because I wouldn't want to do that because I really like her as an artist. But it's just, you know, it just really honestly kind of made me feel some type of way with being an independent artist that I get overlooked um, when it comes to the music that I have because this is not the first time that I felt like something has been taken away from me that I created. Mm -hmm. About your song that we have to say allegedly was right. taken without you getting any credit. So Megan Thee Stallion just put out her album, Good News. Right. I actually liked it. What did you think about I that? Like, I love Megan Thee Stallion. Like, I like the album. Like, I really do. Like, I just did a remix to her song, um, Body. Yes, yes. And when I heard that song, I was like, I already know I'm about to see like a million TikTok videos of people trying to like, body, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's actually, her song actually hit number one. I think the album is number one on um, Apple Music, and I think her album is um, Body, the song is number one on Apple Music as well. Nice, nice. Okay. It was, it was cool to me. I'm like, okay, I see she dragging Tori and I see she dragging her friend, but I, I was here for it. I'm here for it. So, um, but her song, Do It On The Tip, right, which features the City Girls, is very, very similar to which one of your songs? With The Shades, which is funny because I wanted to name it Do It On A Dick, but this being my first project, I didn't want to hear any backlash when I uploaded my album through DistroKid. So, you know, and you, you know, they like cut profanity. So I just named it with the shit. Inspired me to do music, purely, period. It just, I don't know. I just felt like someone my kind um, as a trans woman in the community, I don't promote it, but I don't hide it either. So, and um, I would have known, I don't know if uh, the right term is passable. Right. I wouldn't have known. Right. I mean, I, I, I walk balls, so I walk realness and stuff or whatever, uh, if you don't know what that is. But because I'm passable and it's just a lot of things, I just felt like, you know, the LGBTQ community always get the back burner when it comes to, you know, certain things and nothing is, nobody really shines. Like, you know, thank God we have one gay artist, which is Saucy Santana, who actually kind of made a way to be popular, you know, in the rap industry, get what I'm saying, as an independent artist. Right. But other than that, I was, I told myself, I was like, you know, I don't know, not one trans or openly trans, let me say that, because we don't know a lot of openly trans and openly gay rappers and stuff like that. So I don't know, not one openly trans artist that, you know, do music and that rap and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, decided to take that opportunity and add it to one of my hobbies and try to perfect it. And, you know, by the audience and stuff like that, it seems like I do a good job, apparently. Yeah, your, yeah, your, music, <laughs> your music is dope. And I, as I was listening to it, I was just like, I wonder if like you and Big Frida, if you know who that is. Yeah, from New Orleans. I love to do a song with uh, Big Frida. 
ladies, Treats Gianni. All natural herbs for a fresher, tighter, cleaner, healthier Yanni. <laughs> this is the Yanni bowl. Here are the herbs, the natural herbs. You know, a little steamy, steamy down there, but you know, it perks to it. Keep things, everything right and tight. I'm going to Yanni Steam. If you haven't heard about it, definitely gotta research it. It has wonderful, wonderful benefits. So ladies, try her out. I'm like, like she needs to get with Frida. And, and it's so me. crazy because me from Florida, you know, a lot of Florida people sound like New Orleans people. Do they? In a sense, I think it's the country in us, but okay. yeah, I love to do a song with Big Frida. Yeah, I think I think that would be pretty dope. I could I could just hear you. Wada 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 wada. I can I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I do I do want to say too. Mm -hmm. I think I do know. You said you walk balls. I have walked balls before. I seen a show on Vice. Is that where like it's kind of like underground and like um, it's different categories, like a pageant almost. Almost like a pageant. Um, basically, to me, is you have a panel full of judges and they judge you and give you your tens. Have you watched the show Pose? No, I saw a documentary on Vice though. That okay. was okay. So um, basically, you just um, you have like groups, you have families and stuff like that. And I've been like in two houses. Um, the last house I was in, I think they kicked me out because I wasn't participating as much. <laughs> but um, was called Garson, and I walked the category is uh, Fem Queen Realness, and Fem Queen stands for another word is transsexual. Okay. So realness is basically when you just walk up to the panel and you walk against other girls that's like yourself and it's the judges to say who looks more, basically who looks more like a woman, who's more passable and stuff like that. So, uh, so who's fish and who's not? Basically. So you know. They're going to be bad when I said it, but I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. So you wrote uh, you wrote your song with the shits. When did, was it July of this year? No, I dropped it July. Um, actually, I was working on my project for about a year. I started rapping in 2018, dropped my first single, which is Boss Ass Bitch, and I dropped Make Them Pieces Hit. Um, and then I was doing a lot of remixes to people's songs, like Cardi B Drip, Nicki Minaj, Little Kim, um, City Girls. And one of the remixes I did with City Girls was Careless, and I had got a lot of uh, plays on SoundCloud. Um, last year, my music had got off the whole, like, really, like, all platforms. Okay. So, it kind of, like, the views and stuff had to start over. But my City Girl remix to Careless was actually, like, the most played remix that I did. Uh, okay, okay, and that was actually that, that was a cool song too from the City Girls. And so, uh oh, hey, I'll so, call you back. Okay, no, I'm talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> my, my phone is like a hotline. I'm just give you a fair warning. That, that's a, two phones. So when one phone rings, the other phone rings. Oh yeah, you straight now. Okay. Well, okay. So you said you dropped in July of this year, but you had been working on your music all For year. About, yeah, about a year. Like, um, I was holding a lot of music um and i have i have a couple of music that i haven't released yet due to the fact that some are like based on love past relationships and i felt like you know just i didn't want it to be on my first project so you know i held back on a lot of about six songs i have you know just in my phone that i previously recorded um but yeah so I, that song i wrote that I think it was kind of like last year this time, to be honest, because I was on the road. I did like a little road trip and I just bought a car and started driving different states. And oh, I was, okay. while I was out, I was just writing. 
bad bitch? Are you a bad bitch? Are you a bad bitch? Is you a savage? Now, whether you are a bad bitch or whatever you want to refer to yourself as, I am here to talk to you today about a book called Bad Bitches and Power Pitches that is authored by Precious Williams. Now, one of the biggest differences in life between you and your competitors, I don't give a damn if you're going for a promotion, if you're trying to sell your business or anything, is the ability to effectively communicate. Precious Williams comes from St. Louis, Missouri, which is the home of it being hot in here, St. Paul sandwiches, vet sodas, and the best Chinese food on the damn planet. And she has went from the slums of St. Louis to being able to show you how to elevate your life simply by using the gift of gab. Now, Precious Williams' book has been featured on Forbes, CNN, Black Enterprise, and The Storm Monroe Show. And what I am telling you guys is that you need to hit that link in the description box so you can cop a copy of her book today. And so it, I know the process of creating music is, is it's not simple. A lot of people don't understand. Like we listen to a song and we like, oh, I could do that. It's like, no, you can't. It is a lot of time. It does. Time. Um, yeah. And a lot of creativity. Yeah. I think it's more so like, I don't say I have a lot of metaphors because I don't, you know, I'm not the queen of rap, which I get that to Nicki Minaj. I'm more so I like to talk shit. So I'm from Florida, born and raised from Orlando, Florida. So Oh, you like Trina. You like a Trina then. That's Trina's my mama. She just don't know that. <laughs> so like Trina's my mama. Kai is my auntie. Jackie on my first cousin. You get what I'm saying? So that's the type of music I was raised up on. Okay. Talking shit, being nasty. And to me, I can only to me, I only feel comfortable rapping about stuff that I experience in a sense. Yes. So I can't say, oh, I got a whole bunch of Chanel and stuff like that. And I mean, I got I have a closet full of clothes, but I mean, I'm not going to sit here and lie. You get what I'm saying? So right. you you real you real about yours. And by the way, if you said if you're telling me that you grew up on Trina, Kaya, Jackie, oh, that means you talk shit and you drag at the same time, like right. you. Right. So I mean, I know I can't. We can't cuss, do we? Can we can't cuss on here? You can or say, some, yeah, you oh, can you say beat out. No, no, no. You can say some. Oh some. yeah, yeah. But see, I I be easy to call a fuck nigga, pussy ass nigga, and, you know, <laughs> dirty foot ass hoe, and all that stuff. <laughs> I, love that. I love that. I that that is my favorite thing that Florida people say, and I heard uh, T. S. Madison say it, and uh, Sukiyama say it, and it just right. cracks. Every right. time. And Carisha and Citizen, you gotta give it to the city girls too. That's true. That's true. I just I ain't got nothing against the city girls. I just be what? like, what? can I be? I, I I be waiting for I be waiting for Miami to catch the beat. But that's her style, though. I feel like I mean, it's a lot of artists that, and to, honestly, you know, I have listening to her and being a fan of the city girls. I have seen the growth in her, you know, I agree. with her verses and stuff. Because you know, as a group, I think it's so easy. It's easier when you have to have one verse compared to being an independent artist and being the only artist on a song. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Where you have to have two to three verses and be like, okay, well, damn, all my verses have to kind of hit and stuff like that. Compared to having one verse. And you can sit here and critique yourself like, okay, let me change this. Let me change that. And they be snapping. They do. They they do. They do. Sometimes I And just I be- think they rep us Florida people good. Because the only bitch we had from Florida was Trina. Ah, uh, yeah. You get what I'm saying? That really hit mainstream. And that's born and raised like from Florida. Like yeah. really a lot of Florida um artists don't go mainstream like that. Which I don't know why because it's a lot of people, especially back home, it's a lot of people that are good and have potential and stuff like that. And it's just crazy that, you know, that people get overlooked and I don't know why. But maybe it's a certain look that people are looking for. It could it could be a certain look that they're looking for and then a lot of people a lot of people be low key hating on the South, and I feel like yeah. they can be a whole other conversation. It's like, you but know, a lot of shit come from the South. 
That's what I'm saying. Like you got niggas in New York trying to sound like they're from Atlanta, and it's like you're not from Atlanta. Right. But. Exactly. Exactly. Especially with the females, like you know, I and I love Little Kim. Me being from the South, of course, I was more of a Trina friend than Little Kim because I wasn't from up north. You get what I'm saying? Right. So I know Trina, all her albums. That's what I had listened to. So like, shit didn't really get back popular for us women be able to say what we have and how we get money and kind of, you know, disrespect a nigga and be boss bitches until City Girls really came out. That just being real. Embrace Pangea is a black owned health and wellness brand that has solidified themselves as being able to take care of your yoni. But guess what? They do more than just service your yoni. Yes, it, as a matter of fact, Embrace Pangea has products to cover you from head to toe, inside and out. And in particular, let me tell you about a couple products that I personally use. Number one is the herbal tooth powder that is better than any toothpaste that you will get over the counter. It will get your teeth clean and help your teeth to maintain a natural white shade. And in addition, to that the advanced botanical mouthwash is something that we all should have in our medicine cabinet now when you look at a bottle like this with 25 potent herbs like echinacea golden cell don't laugh at me if i mispronounced that you know what i meant <laughs> we need these natural ingredients in our mouth rinses so that we can fight tooth decay gingivitis all of that plaque halitosis and overall poor hot oral hygiene okay so if you want to get a good clearance when you go to the dentist get you some embrace pangea and in addition to that make sure you use my code storm to get 10 percent off your order and check out today Cause, yes. cause, cause I want you, if you haven't, I want you to play like, like we just gonna play Trina. And I want you to sit there. Do you, do you really listen to the City Girls to know the songs? I know the hits. I don't really know their music. Like. Okay, so if you know the hits, I want you to listen to like two or three of the City Girls songs and listen to Trina first album okay and i want you to listen to the words like everything that we're saying now trina already said it. her intro hey we roll look out the window see that fuck nigga around around the street in a jail that's the lit right there nigga i can get his bread take all his dough like that's what everybody's saying now she said that over damn near 20 about 20 years yeah okay so it's just crazy <laughs> So it, it's it's like an updated version, so I, I get that. I right. get that. So let me ask you this: In your music making process, is there any way your music could have got leaked from your camp into her camp? I don't have a camp, so everything is with me. Okay. So I feel as if, uh, which I do want a team, but every every I do everything independently. It's crazy, like from pictures to finding photographer to knowing how I want my, you know, graphics and have an idea. Like, even right now, like, with my project, I have, I feel like I have a lot of good songs on my project that needs a visual behind it. You get what I'm saying? Because the visual is everything to me. Yes. And everybody don't have a big budget. So I had, like, reached out to this um, videographer here in Atlanta and um, it spoke with their management team just to see, you know, what is the price point when it comes to getting the video done? Because I don't know. Only thing I know is to, okay, I want to look like this and I, I could do my own makeup and I can hire hairstylists and I got, you know, I, I could grab a whole glam, glam team. Right. But I just want to know the budget of, okay, what if I want to be in this mansion and what if I want to be in this car? Because I'm a big girl. Like, I'm 6'5", so I'm already a style you my damn self. Wait, you 6'5"? I'm 6'5". Yeah, I don't look like it, but I'm 6'5". That means you all legs. You must be all legs. Kind of, sort of, yeah. I think I have a little, 
No, I don't think my torso is too long, but yeah. You six five? I'm six five. Wow. So so the crazy part is if I was to ever do a uh feature with Megan, I would make her look small. Right, right. Do you what do you wear high heels too on top of that? Yeah, I wear high heels. Going to the club looking like shit. Gee, cause like, like damn, who is this big ass pretty ass bitch? <laughs> cause like when I when I met Nene, she fought she five eleven and she wore six inch heels. So if you six five, you met Nene. I, I used to do um Nene Lee's makeup. Oh, did you? Nene, Jocelyn, uh, Marlo, K Michelle. I did a couple of people makeup. Okay, I got some questions in. Oh shit. What? How were they? Let, let me ask you this: As far as your celebrity clients, were they cool? Did they have attitudes? What was the general, you know, attitude? I mean, it's, it's a um, prior to meeting them, you base them off of what you see. Um, people have proven that they're exactly what you see on TV, and other people have proven differently. Okay. Um. Like the celebrity clients that I had, I really honestly, I'm, you know, sit here and say, like, I kind of like enjoy working with all of them. Um, I don't had a good experience, I don't had a bad experience. So, I mean, what what do you want to hear? I want I, I want to hear I want to hear uh, one of one of the craziest experiences you had. Um, craziest. I won't say it was crazy. I would say I was more disappointed. Okay. And this goes to K. Michelle, and I love K. Michelle. Oh. And I know she, I know she's a girl that she's gonna speak her mind. And actually, I did her makeup um, before I transitioned over, and that was in 2016. Okay. Um, I had did her makeup, and I don't know if it was the booking person that hired me or whatever, but they had me to come at a time and I didn't do her makeup until like two and a half, three hours. Then I arrived. So I had to wait. Then I did her makeup and she was uh, allergic to a product that I had that I had no knowledge of. Mm. So kind of had to like wipe it off. But her as a person, I love K. Michelle. Like okay. from a mixtape, like my favorite songs from hers. Crying is easy, pillow. That's one of the first mixtape. Like I can the list can go on, but that's how much and long I've been rocking with her. So okay. it's no bad blood, but that was my most disappointing experience because I didn't even get a I think I didn't even get a chance to do her makeup again. And I actually cried. I'm not even gonna sit here and cap. I cried in my challenges. Oh yeah. I was so upset and disappointed because as a upcoming artist, hairstylist, makeup, you know, clothes, whatever the case may be, you always have high hopes working with people that you look up to and you listen to and stuff like that. And when you get to a point where you finally be able to work with them and something don't go right as planned, it'd be very disappointing and get very discouraging. So. And, and I can understand that because that's it's kind of like once some go wrong, she ain't even gonna book you again. Right. And, that's yeah. That's what it was. Wow. I, know I have her beat because she be pretty. So damn, it was crazy. Oh, and I worked with Jocelyn Hernandez. How was that? <laughs> Jocelyn is crazy, and I love her. Like even though we don't talk anymore. I can honestly say that I enjoy working with her. Um, she talks so much shit. She was like, girl, get your fat ass up. Come on. Like, she'll even motivate me. <laughs> like, it'll be to the point when she say, Akila, bitch, I don't want you going nowhere. Stay tonight. So I'm staying tonight. She was like, you'll run to the store, pick up these, so take the car. So I'm driving in the G-Wagon, you know, me and my bitch, we don't really even have G-Wagons like that in Orlando driving around. So, you know me, I said, oh, you want me to drive the car? Okay. <laughs> so, you know, right on 85, you know, picking up shit and stuff like that. Um, I think people 
judge her wrong. Do you, okay, I think let me let me try to put this in. Because you know, I'm a Jocelyn right Hernandez right. fan. I I'm love a, Jocelyn. Me too. I I feel as if you know how people been portrayed and hurt and don't know how to love, mm -hmm. don't know how to open and allow people in their personal space and automatically hold a guard up. You know when it comes to people. I think yeah. that's what Jocelyn is. Yamaya's Gift is a brand that specializes in medicinal herbs and all natural supplements to help alleviate a lot of conditions that Americans suffer from, okay? Now, Yamaya's Gift got products to help you with that hypertension, to help speed up that weight loss, get rid of them fibroids, as well as help alleviate the symptoms of that diabetes. Oh yeah, that sugar, that sugar is real bad. So now with Yamaya's Gift, you get a lot of gifts, but the best gift that anyone could ever give you is the ability to heal thyself from the inside out with products like elderberry syrup to help keep that immunity in check because we all fighting Miss Rona. We all trying to windmill her ass up out of her lives. But one of my personal favorites, as a matter of fact, two of my personal favorite products with your mind's gift is the all natural honey and the tea that's for men. And the reason why I like those products is because if you are somebody with a low sex drive, if you need a boost in the bedroom and if you are ready to get brian pompered lexington steeled all night long then just put some of that in your man's cup and you will be on your way to a happier healthy marriage all right now place your orders today whether you need your immunity taken care of you're trying to lose some weight you're trying to get rid of that sugar the diabetes or you're just trying to bust a nut okay order her shit at www.yamayasgift.com are you looking for a great opportunity would an extra $1,000 a month help you? What about $5,000 or even $20,000 a month? Would that make a difference in your life? What if I told you there is a company that is training people every day how to earn a daily income as well as a weekly income? Yes, you can get paid in two different ways. No prior experience required. Training is provided and you can start right away. But you must be 18 years or older. You can work from almost anywhere globally. The company's top pay scale is $1 million a month. There are thousands of people worldwide who are joining this company and within just a few months are earning more than their yearly salary. You can set your own hours, be your own boss. Training is available every day and so much more. And there are thousands of independent business owners earning money every day and every week. And she's a great person, but she holds a guard up. And I feel like she's not wrong at a sense, especially when you hurt. Like you can't, it's hard to heal hurt people. But yeah. like right now, like she's in a relationship. I think she's married now. You know, she has Bunny Bella. Um, and she seems to be in a positive place now. You get what I'm saying? Back from when she was in Atlanta. So. I'm yeah, I, I agree. I think I think with her, she's one of those people like you. She got your back. She really got your back. Yeah, she really but, fucks with you. Yeah, like it was so crazy because, like, with Jocelyn, you know, you don't post to really mix personal and business, but it was more so like at a short period of time because we only worked together consistently like four months, mm -hmm. four to five months. Um, during the time that um, it was her last season on Loving Hip Hop Atlanta, uh, when she started uh, co-hosting for The Real, uh, me, oh, that was my first time ever going to L.A. was with Jocelyn. That was a terrible, terrible experience. And let me tell you how it was terrible, because I get to L.A., me and Cliff, you know Cliff Vimeer? He's oh, yeah. Dallas. Yes. Okay, yeah. So um, me and Cliff Vermeer, he was doing the hair and I was doing the makeup. And me and him got on the um, plane and we get there and they lost my luggage. And my makeup kit was in my luggage. So I had to go to the drugstore and we caught the last flight. So I don't think we got to L.A. to probably like 12, 1 o'clock when we landed. It had to be up at 6 in the morning. So it was, it was very heavy. 
But it was okay because I got a little insurance claim and got all my makeup back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, from American least... Airlines. But yeah, that was a bad experience. Well, shout, well, shout out to American Airlines, but I, I, you know what? That's crazy. I, hmm. What? I'm happy to hear someone speak positively on her and Jocelyn as a person, though. Right. No, like, a, she's she's a good yeah. person. She has her yeah. ways. The bitch is crazy. I ain't finna sit here and cap. She crazy. We don't, we don't, but she's crazy as in like fun, though. Because you have to be a see me me being almost 30, have um forced me live as an adult and you know became independent and having my own and going through so many trials and tri tribulations through life you know I, I i've been through so much so i'm already a strong person and you have to be a strong person to deal with somebody that talks a lot of shit because i don't see any of it you get mm. what i'm saying yes like you can't fade me like people break down and stuff like that or whatever. Like, even with this whole Megan situation, I made a post, and I made a post and said, all I'm going to say is great minds think alike. Because, of course, I don't want to point the fingers. And then I made a video because I've seen a lot of negative feedback and a lot of, you know, bad things. And I'm like, I don't want to come off that person because I'm not like that. I'm real. I'm going to say, okay, this and that. But but being in her shoes, you have to put her, yourself in her shoes. And maybe somebody brought that to her. We have yeah. a lot of people that I know a lot of people that work with her, such as hairstylists, makeup artists. You know what I'm saying? And she's in tune with the LGBT community. So ain't no telling who played my music and who brought this to her and stuff like that. Because she say, do it on a date, do it on a date, do it, do it, do it on a date, do it on a date. I say, do it on a handstand, do it on a date, do, do it on a handstand, do it on a date, do, do it on a handstand. And it's, ain't no telling who, you know, brought it to her. So, yes, because I, I, I think what people should know, too, me, me and you talked about this before we started taping, is that when I look at the writing credits, you got Carisha, you got Jantavia, you got some dude named Jason or something like that. Then you got Megan at the end. And so. Like you just said, somebody probably brought in the hook, brought in this, right. brought in that. She added her flair, and she had no clue. So we ain't trying to bash her, no. but it's the point of, uh, first off, I, I mean, let, let, let's be clear. Like, she's she's on her way to being a big star. So right. it's not even about hating. Right. It's, it's the point of you have so many independent artists that y'all put your energy, your, your livelihood, your everything into your music. And in a snap of a finger, you hear your shit on the billboard charts and you like, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And then it's crazy because it's like when I made a comment um, that, you know, I felt like stuff has been taken or whatever the case may be. Um, I had found this uh, producer and um, he had basically made a beat and um, I brought it from him and I felt like he was trying to talk to me. And when it comes to guys and stuff like that, I figured like they don't know my tea in a sense. So when I kind of like brushed them off to keep it business, I felt like he felt some type of way. Mm -hmm. And the beat that he sold to me that apparently that I brought, he never sent me my lease agreement stating that i own the rights to it oh so after that i recorded it the my i say i told him i say you know what it is what it is i'm still going to use this beat even though i don't have a lease agreement he was like nah that's yours you know what i'm saying i ain't like that blah, blah, blah. i said why it's so hard for you to send me a lease agreement right because Every beat that you purchase, whether it's from Beat Stars, Airbit, it automatically comes to your email with a lease agreement. Right. So he didn't give me a lease agreement. So um, it was um, who was it? Oh, um, Light Skin Keisha, and I love her too. 
she had dropped her EP or album. It was a picture with her in the phone booth. But one of her songs, she had a Spectre Gadget beat. It sounded exactly like mine. And I'm like, I can't even use the beat. Her stuff is out. You get what I'm saying? Right. The crazy part, it wasn't produced by him, so it wasn't him. But that goes to show that maybe people um, think alike. You get what I'm saying? And I was like, cause I didn't, I never heard a song with a beat comes, what comes on and say da 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 da, da 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 da. Like I had my whole plan. Like I wanted a photo shoot with the big, what is called the microscope, the little big circle thing with the spectacle yeah. that you had. Okay, so you you had you had, oh, your I had a whole visual. Like, yeah, I'm I'm very creative, so I had a whole visual of what I wanted to do when I dropped that single, but. I heard somebody else come out with it. I'm like, oh, I can't even use that beat no more. So now it's going to look like I took it from them. Yep. When you had it in the first place and he wouldn't sing you your shit all because you wouldn't talk to him. It's a lot of situations that I have gone through. Like, even recently, like, I was where I recorded my um, project at. Um, once my project got finished, I recorded, it's 11 tracks on my project. I recorded about four to five other songs. And then I started working on um, two other songs, which the last single that I dropped was Big Old Freak. Um, and I had recorded another song. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say the name of it because I haven't released it yet. Okay. But anyway, um, when I was doing the last two singles, we well, working on them. My team, which was my engineer and the owner of the place, pulled me into like a little meeting and questioned my sets. And it was weird to me because I felt like, why are you questioning me when I'm coming here to pay to record my music? Like, why does it matter what I have or what I had between my legs? Why does that matter to you? Oh, questioning like that. Oh. Yeah, questioning me like that. So, you know, when, when the question came to me and it was like, are you a man or a woman? And I'm like, first off, that's, that's not even how you ask that question. Because what the fuck is in front of you? Don't Thanks. I look like a woman? Yes. I carry myself as a woman. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So my whole information and driver's license, even to my birth certificate, says female. I asked him, I said, do you want to fuck me? Because that's the only reason we should be having this conversation. Even though in the industry, it don't matter because it's Like, do you want to fuck me? That's, that's it. Yeah. So if, if, if that answer is a no, then don't worry about it because then it turns to, oh, well, we fuck with you and we like your music and we just want to know before we before we invest in you what route we need to go. And I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it at all. So um, before it got further and I be another one of these trans deaths that don't matter, in a sense, because that's how you know it seems it is. Then I just went ahead and departed and left. You know, stop well, working with them. Well, well, let, 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 let me ask you this: Now that we, you know, established the Meg stuff and <laughs> your history, how 
what what kind of diff difficulties do you face dating and do you you know like what what is that like for you um oh dating is hard and you know what's so crazy to me i feel like the more passable and pretty you are the more difficult it is it's fun it's fun um i don't know i just feel like when it comes to men first off a lot of men look at trans women as a fantasy um because a lot of us had to experience being a sex worker if you didn't have the support of your family to be able to be come out and be open and be able to be home and remain in school and continue with college and um have a normal life i would say okay so with me um i came out um and i have somewhat of a very 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 small family like i don't have a grandma living i don't have a dad you know what i'm saying i don't have too many family members so when i came out I didn't have the option to be like, oh, I'm going to go to my grandma's house. So I'm going to go to my cousin or auntie house. So I was kind of already like forced to go on the streets in a sense. So my personal experience, you know, I met a couple of gay friends and I started working and escorting and having tricks. So when girls experience, like talk about like having tricks and stuff like that, that shit is real. Like, my first trick was in Miami. I was working yeah. on 79th and Biscayne in Miami. He now, me now, your first, Orlando, huh? now, now your first trick, I want I want you to tell uh to, to tell the audience, was it like uh a, a dude you wouldn't like was it like a a buff masculine dude or was it like a oh no my first trick was actually a white man named Tim and he <laughs> he was a no he was Tim and it was a place called um, Blue Martinis that is no longer in Orlando that was attached to Millennium Mall and I stayed in Orlando by Millennium Mall and I had an advertisement that page was no longer with us Craigslist was no longer with us and stuff like that but anyway at the time I advertised on there you know I'm not ashamed because I'm a real ass bitch y'all gonna find out any motherfucking way so right, right. it is what it is so just me being real um, he hit my advertisement up. Mind you, I'm 18, 18, so I'm 29 now. And that's 10 years ago. So I had this guy, and he was bringing me $400 every Monday. No, every Monday he was bringing me $400. What? And you know, at 18, 19, bitch, I was just, I just was working at McDonald's. And CVS, so it's more so like, oh, four hundred dollars, bitch. That was my whole check for the two weeks. Right. And this man really don't want much from me sexually. You get what I'm saying? It was more so what people don't realize is when it comes to the escorting business and being in the adult industry, you meet people that kind of just want communication. You know, intimate. Yeah. In, intimate and communication it just fit the feel of somebody being there so it don't really be about sex all the time yeah. you know and people don't understand that but um if they don't live their life they will never understand i'm just say that but yeah anywho he used to see me every monday when he left the blue martini um and then he got comfortable enough the crazy part this was the crazy part at that time, I didn't fully transition, but I always was passable when I put hair on and makeup and I looked like a woman. So this, I'm, it's so crazy. This is what kind of started my transition. Um, he was like, baby, why don't you have your nails done and toes done? He didn't know that, bitch, because I live a life as a, a boy in the daytime. I only get dressed up just to see you. You get what I'm saying? So he asked to for me to get my nails and stuff done. And I was like, oh fuck. So I got my nails done because of course I didn't want to lose him as a client. And the money was good. Mm -hmm. And I made it a full-time job. Not part-time. I made it a full-time job. And the money started coming in. And you know, 
looking in the mirror and getting all the compliments and my comp my 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 confidence within myself grew a lot and I began to love the person that I was becoming. So beautiful. It kind of stuck to it. So that that's my story. Everybody's story different, but are you struggling with hair growth issues or are you ready to finally be able to actually put your hair in a real ponytail and not that little knob? Have you found that beauty supply products leave your hair dry, flat, useless, and dull? And are you ready for a change? And if you are, you need to try some Moo Moo Grease. Moo. This product was created for us. And nothing will change about your hair if you don't change your regimen. This product can be used in old people, young people, it doesn't matter. The products are 100% vegan and all of the information for Moo Moo Grease is down in the description box below. It is, but but it took but it took a white man named Tim to push you. White home. man named Tim. <laughs> a white man named Tim. Yep. What do you aspire to, um, as far as relationship wise in the future? Do you want a husband, kids? What do you I want, want me a husband. I want me kids. Again, like I said, I don't have a big family, um. So, I don't know. It's just like I want. Yeah, I'm at this point now. It's kind of like now that my 20s are ending, I kind of started at 25. You get what I'm saying? Like, you know how we make a lot of mistakes. And I feel like our 20s are meant, that decade is meant to make as much mistakes as possible and to learn and to grow. Excuse me. And right now with me turning 30, it's like, okay, well, you know, you don't go out as much. You're not even really like sexual active like that. And it's like, oh, I'm tired of paying a rent for an apartment. Like, I'm at to the point like, okay, like I want to get ready to close on my first house now. Now a bitch is now thinking about credit. A bitch ain't thought about that. A bitch was back <laughs> in, straight out of high school, in high school, in early twenties. A bitch was going right out stealing souls, out of souls, writing checks, and doing all the dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Going to jail and just doing a whole bunch of ignorant shit. But now that you're getting older, it's like you can't do that stuff no more. Yes, absolutely. Especially when you, especially when you like invest into your home and have a fully furnished home. Like I'm in a two bedroom apartment, and this is my one of my bedrooms, and I'm like built me a closet. And I can't afford to go to jail. My whole house fully furnished. Right. I can't afford for my shit to be gone. See, back then, when the bitch was living out of suitcase and a duffel bag, and you get what I'm saying like that, people ain't really give a fuck. But now, no. And I want a husband, and I want kids. I want about at least two. I would settle for two. But I want four. And I, you know, I want to find me a surrogate. And now, technology is th the way it is now. Bitch, I want to be able to take my frozen, you know, sperm cells and my man's sperm cells. And I heard that they can be able to put into, you know, a cis woman and she can have twins and it be me and his baby. So, I don't know. But I know yeah, that's going to yeah. cost some money. But ain't no I'm, telling what God has for me. But that's you know, true. Girl. That's true. The, uh, the exercise dude, uh, Sean T, that do like the abs. Mm -hmm. um, but the ball head, him and his husband did that with the surgery. So, oh, okay. Yeah. It, it's, I, I'm, you know, I just say all, I, I ask that, you know, because a lot of people that are trans, they watch and a lot of them think like they can't live the same, they can't have a family just because they have an alternative lifestyle. Uh, and you can. You can. And I know, I'll be, you know, <laughs> if y'all gonna sit your ass down, <laughs> I'm so ready to be a mama. So okay. because I had a, I had a good mom and my mom was, you know, an independent black woman. All I knew my mom was to work. And the crazy part is, like, even to this day, my mama still hides from me, you know, certain stuff. But I never experienced 
the lights being off and having our stuff on the streets and stuff like that. You get what I'm saying? That's a blessing. So not saying that it, it didn't happen, but she, as a mother, she didn't allow her child to see it. Yeah. And I was the only child till I was 15. So, you know, and I have a little sister. Now she's turning 14 in March. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I I would definitely say I have enjoyed this conversation. We have talked about Mig. Right. Story. People are going to get to know you, which is the whole purpose of my channel. So right. let, let the people know where they can actually find you on social media and download mm -hmm. your music. Oh, yeah. So you can find me on Keila B's music. That's K I L A H B's, B E E Z as in zebra, music on Instagram. Um, add like four C's to that um, on Triller and TikTok. I'm going to get on there. But um, y'all have to go download my album, which is Heavy Load. Um, and I'm 6'5", 450 pounds, and I carry it well. <laughs> I carry it well. So I'm an overall glamazon, I like to call it. Yes. And um, y'all let me know what it is. Streaming, it's on all platforms, um, everywhere. I'm not going to name it. Um, I have a lot of remixes, of course, because I can't put it on platforms to sell. Which is on my SoundCloud, which is Keila B's. And that's it. Um, any new music coming out? I don't know as of yet. Um, oh, again, what I was going to say is because, you know, I realized that making a music video costs so much. Um, and somebody gave me a budget saying, oh, music video starts at $15,000. Like, $15,000? I ain't one of those bitches to, you know, I ain't finna have no Birkin in my closet and I'm still paying rent and don't own no property. That's just crazy to me. But, so I'm in the process of finding a videographer that um, has good quality in the camera and stuff like that. So I'll be able to make a video. So that's my next thing right now. I don't want to really put out more music until I have at least one or two videos from my um project like a uh, actual production video i do have a twerking video um uh, from one of my songs wobble which is my number one played song on my project which is a twerking song um uh, shout out to drew visuals who recorded that and we recorded that during quarantine in my house and i went on amazon and got a lot of balloons and black lights and fogs and Money machine, money machines, and I told my stripper homegirls, my homegirl Shaniqua, shout out to you, babe, love you to death, and had her girls to bring um, her homegirls, Paisley and all of them, and uh, some of my gay friends and stuff came, and I told them, like, blend in, we finna make this shit look like a club, and he did what he had to do. That was my first video, my first and only video from my project. Okay. Kind of like, but it was it was it was good it turned out very very good but i do want to have a production video where i actually have looks and express my creativity that's dead deep down inside this big ass body of mine <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you, can, hopefully you can do it you know takashi he shot like two videos in his uh in his apartment takashi got money yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's inspiration, though. It's inspiration. Got money. I ain't saying I ain't, I ain't broke. Now, I ain't never going to be broke. Amen. I'm just saying, like, who got ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 to spend, and I'm not scamming or doing, you know, illegal shit. So, True that. Yep. Y'all follow me and download Heavy Load and tell me what y'all think. And hopefully, I will be doing, I will do features. So, whoever hit me up for a feature or whatever the case may be. But as far as my own project, I may do a EP in February, like a little love EP. I don't know, probably like three or four songs. But I don't think I'm gonna drop my next project until my big thirtieth, which is next year, June. Nice. Sixteen nice. Gemini, real crazy. That's my old nigga. 
<laughs> oh, wow. oh, Lord. Okay. I don't want no smoke. Real crazy. Did you? I remember that video a long time ago when I was like, don't let this pretty face fool you. Because fuck, nigga, I whooped your ass. Remember that? That was. I, 2014. Look, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want no smoke. Let me ask you though: Do you, uh, if, if you're comfortable, did you want a freestyle or? Oh no, I don't freestyle. No freestyle. Okay. <laughs> I don't freestyle. Uh uh-uh. uh. Now that's what I don't do. But okay. You give me a beat. I see him write something real cute, and I don't have no ghostwriter, so I see him. Oh, I'm on the phone. That I'm on. Let me see my other phone. Do I have stuff right here? I have so much shit in my notes. And this is how I write. So, okay, look, look at this little stuff right here. I don't know if y'all can see that. Wait a minute. Says, I'm, I'm a broke I'm bitch dream. Attitude real mean. Something, 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 something. I don't know what it is. I just I just think of something and write it down until it comes to a paragraph. Good. <laughs> until it's enough. And then I go and tweak it, listen to it, and be like, nah, I should have said this better. Oh, I should have said this better. Then that's how I write myself. I don't know how everybody else writes, but I have to hear a beat, like a beat, listen to the beat, and I write to a beat. I'm not a freestyler. Are you living a hectic and stressful life? Between the news, and racial stress and trauma? Do you find yourself feeling alone and anxious? If so, join our community, Mind, Body, Faith, and learn how to establish daily practices that aid in healing the mind, body, and spirit, like meditation, yoga, prayer, breath work, and journaling. Pause and let your spirit breathe by using our meditation prayer cards and meditation candles when you need to reconnect with God. Start on your new path by taking our meditation quiz because it's always a good time to meditate with God. That's okay. I mean... Do you got I can do you, try. Do, but do you got your I will say this though. Do you got your vision board? Because I need you to have Big Frida on there. I need you to have all your Yeah, I need of course. Like I wanna I wanna work with a lot of people. Yes. Um I wanna work with Big Frida. I work with Megan, Nikki, of course, City Girls, a lot of people, like even RP and I'm I'm a big, 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 big R&B person. Like, I love R&B. Like, Anita Baker is my favorite artist. Female R&B artist. And I'm very old school. That's okay. So, all my my friends and fans that watch me when I do my makeup on Facebook, which is, my name is Akila Alley. Y'all can follow me on Facebook. That's A-H-K-I-L-A-H. A L L E N. When I go on there and go on live, do my makeup, I be playing old school music. Cause I feel like that soothes my mind. Yeah. Like I'll listen to Luther Vandross before I go to the club. What? Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait. I'm telling you, like that's the type of person I am. Cause I'll be like, and a friend be like, Keila, turn that shit off. And I'll be like, bitch, we finna hear what the fuck you finna hear in like 30 minutes. <laughs> Let me get my mind together because. If Kaya start playing Don't Trust No Nigga and it start playing, I may instantly get mad and turn the switch and I'll be ready like, okay, well, you know, let me change my outfit because I may have to swing on me a bitch tonight. See, and I don't want to go to a uh, 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 the club having that type of mindset. So I try to keep positivity and, you know. Yes. That is that Gemini you. You need your calm before your house. <laughs> my stage is in the fucking kitchen right now. And I'm a twirling around my whole house. Okay. I love that. Well, I, I want to say thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Um, I'm going to get this up ASAP because I want, I want people to hear your story. You are very intriguing. I'm not going to forget your face. 
And I know, I'm sure I will see you again. So you definitely uh, take care and thank you for coming thank on. Thank you. This is my first interview. So I, I appreciate you for reaching out and me taking the time. Like, okay, well, let me really do this. Yeah, a- absolutely. Because I didn't wait because you kind of made me feel comfortable. Like, even I could tell before you start hitting the record button. Like, uh, it wasn't on no messy shit. Because I'm not really not that type of person. No, no, I don't, I don't do, I wouldn't do you like that. No, no, right. But you know, some people out here, but yeah, but thank you again. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And I'll share it on my page. Yes, I will let you know once it's up, share it, and uh, hey, we'll be in touch. You never know. Okay, perfect. Thank Take you. Easy. Uh, it's Storm Show. Hey, it's Storm Show. Storm show.